okay so very good morning good evening to all of you guys and uh, till now what all things we have covered in linux uh, we are going to see that one that is introduction to linux a prerequisite tools required to build linux server end to end installation a linux architecture basic commands managing uh, lvm user management and today we are going to see this network configuration and troubleshooting guys uh, uh in this one whatever i have taught before so for you guys it's completely different because most of the thing have been deprecated in the previous version of rhel so i have made so many changes according to the rhel 9 so this is why you guys are not going to see the same thing what you have seen in my previous video again i am telling you same goes for managing sc linux same goes for booting procedure uh, for job automation it is same uh, what it was there ssh authentication so so many changes will be there that's what okay fine uh, so let's start this one and how how is your practice going on for you guys so fine guys uh, yeah. let's directly jump into this uh, uh, network configuration uh, and troubleshooting i have given the name as a network configuration and troubleshooting in rhel 9 okay so one more thing here i am not going to explain you uh, that what is class A, class B and class C that is basically a part of VPC only virtual private cloud. So there I'll be explaining how we decide a range of IP and all those things will be there. So here directly we'll be jumping on what all files are required, especially uh, to work in RHEL 9. Yeah, so see here uh, carefully guys. So especially in uh network troubleshooting okay and uh, normally we don't directly jump into the troubleshooting part right you can take down your hand sagar fine uh, so the important network configuration files and troubleshooting in rhel line so whatever the thing i'm going to explain today that is as per the rhel line standards guys okay so just see here the network configuration and troubleshooting the main network configuration files in rhel 9 are these files are here so you have to see what all these files are here so these files are basically you see here this is earlier this is why i'm told that in rhel 7 and all most of the things has been deprecated right so when you go and check slash etc uh, file is this config network just try to cat this particular file so we are into our same server and if you try to do cat slash etc sys config okay and then network right so you are going to only get created by anaconda and all so earlier most of the configuration we do it uh, for the network purpose for the uh, into this file only okay but it is now no more in rhel 9 it's deprecated uh, it's sorry deprecated in rhel 9 so it means there is no use in this one correct so and the other file here if it is showing is that uh, if you want to see the system host name basically if you want to see this system has a host name normally everybody every identity has a host every identity has a name and all correct so same way you need to give a name for a system so whenever you are going to run call host name over here right host name correct so you can see local host local domain name it's showing over here but if i go over here and if i clear this one and if i run the same command host name correct so it is showing engineer uh, engr one dot abhishek roshan dot com means this is a fully qualified domain name it means if i type simply host name <coughs> okay so it's going to give me the output of this host name only but in this case it is not giving me the output as a host name because the host name is not set for this particular virtual machine this is that reason it is not giving me the host name there is other command also in rhe 9 host name okay if you do double tab over here so you can get it over here that is host name ctl okay host name ctl correct so so this again so the difference between host name and host name ctl you can see clearly it is showing that it will give you the inf uh, information uh, of this virtual machine in detail so if somebody this this is also a part of like earlier we used to do, do it like even if you try to run for rhel 9 so you can also come to know whether it's a virtual machine or it's a physical hardware and all right so here also you can see the model is vmware uh, it's mentioned also virtual platform vmware inc and all right and it's also giving the machine id boot id and it is also telling the chassis as a vm only it's a virtual machine okay 
and its transient name host name is basically local host is there so you can get the detail in uh, detail right basically in uh, if you want in detail like lvs command is there or lv display command is there same way it works like here if you only giving host name so you are going to get the only name but if you want to get in detail manner then you can use host name ctl over here right so <clears throat> this is all about host name and slash etc host file is there this file is the most important file uh, if you are doing anything in linux server guys okay so previously also to i told you that when <clears throat> when you are communicating over a network correct when you are trying to communicating over a network for example if you are coming over here and let's clear this one and if i am doing a ping command www google right dot com correct if i am doing this one so i am able to do it but when i am pinging a google server okay so i am pinging with a familiar name with a human readable name and this human readable name is nothing but it's a fully qualified domain name we also call it as a fqdn okay fully qualified domain name means what this is the domain name basically this is the dot com is the domain name but here if you see google this is the name so i'll explain each and everything why we use www.google.com in dns this is a part of dns there i'll be explaining this one but as of now just try to understand when you are pinging this one right so obviously in network will not understand this one right network will only understand the ip right so for net this is that reason you have to map a ip to host and host to ip basically you can also call this as a host name or uh, whatever it is okay just like we have given this one right host name so local host local domain so ip to host and host to ip mapping has to be done in which file so that ip to host and host to ip mapping has to be done slash etc host file will be there guys one second s okay so here you can see there is no ip to host and host to ip mapping has been done okay this is that reason there are multiple places where you can make an entry to of your host name and you make sure that when you are going to communicate over a network okay so then you have to give ip to host and host to ip and the same thing you can see in this server which i have after configuring the dns i have already mentioned over here slash etc host name right sorry slash etc hosts correct so here you can see the ip of this server i have given and the fully qualified domain name also i have given over here understanding my point right so when you do ns lookup command okay normally ns lookup command is used to resolve the ip to host and host to ip guys okay whether ip to host is resolving or uh, so here you can see it's resolving ip to host right and basically if you wanted to give instead of fully qualified domain name you can give the ip of this server also so you should be getting the reverse also right so this is only possible when dns is configured okay so but in this case what basically this slash etc host file is doing over here understand again so this slash etc host file if somebody is asking you what is the purpose of slash etc host files so it's used for local resolution see there is one global resolution and there is one local resolution local resolution means a virtual machine also have a internal network correct a virtual machine if you are ip you are assigning explicitly forgot about the ip that is static ip or the dynamic ip that is different thing but if you just wanted to see whether the network connectivity within a operating system is working properly or not right in linux then how you are going to do it you can do it with the help of slash etc host file only so you can make an entry in this file also and when see if you do if config command basically if config command we used to see the ip of this particular virtual machine okay this is in case the other one i wanted to show you the machine which we are working on so this one right so you can see this is the ip but this is dhcp this is dynamically assigned by the dial up ne network 
from your internet service provider okay we, because we have chosen nat correct we haven't used any static ip static ip is something which we have to provide to the system statically okay but this is a dynamic ip but i am not talking about if your internet interface is down if your internet is down so how if your internet is not working then in that case how you are going to make sure the network internal connectivity of your network is working properly so there slash etc host file is working so it's resolved locally so that is called 127.0.0 dot one is there guys so whenever you try to ping this ip okay 127 dot something is there it's going to ping over here so if you have to resolve locally so you have to ping this ip before configuring your static ip or a dynamic ip which you've seen and even you can make an entry and which file is responsible for that one for the local resolution and that is slash etc host file is there Correct. So same way here, if you wanted to resolve the IP to host and host to IP globally, that is from www. www is nothing but worldwide consortium, guys. Okay. So if you are connected through the world, okay, obviously you wanted to connect through Google network or a Facebook network or uh, sorry to the Facebook uh, portal or anywhere. So you wanted to connect to any server, then there should be a database. Okay, DNS is nothing but domain name system because see, basically network, uh, I would say network configuration and troubleshooting has to be after the DNS, but this is a part of before so that you guys will understand how is exactly the network works in Linux server. Okay, so in that case, a central server, it's, it's act like a central database only where it's nothing but it's a database only where all the domain name uh, will be there like dot com dot in sub -le different levels of domain name will be there okay and according to that it's going to validate and you should be able to uh, you should be able to uh, see that page of different websites and all right even if you see that some of the pages we don't see which is in uk right correct which is in uh, us and all right so for that we see for india it is dot in right but when you use dot com so it is become a global right so that is the topmost level of domain basically that is a part of dns but just to understand if you wanted to make sure that this server the server from which this server i am talking about this server should communicate to the dns server okay then you have to make a global entry you have to make a name server entry over here that is slash etc resolve.con file is there so as of now you can see what is this name server is pointing over here that is 192.168.72.2 it's nothing but it's a gateway it's an internet gateway this is not the name server basically you cannot tell this is the name server guys okay this is a gateway ip okay the gateway ip of your internet service provider that is what the dial up network okay for that only which is according to class c okay so class a class b or class c uh, that i'll be explaining in your vpc but as of now just understand if locally you want to resolve the ip to host and host to ip then you have to use slash etc host file but if you want to resolve ip to host and host to ip then you have to use a global name server and that configuration has to be inside your resolve.com file only okay and that is what it is mentioned over here that resolve.con file is there right so define dns server for name resolution okay so there should be a central means for worldwide there should be someone will be there who should resolve so if you are connecting through google network okay you sorry not the network if you are connecting to google right if you are trying to connect to facebook right you are trying to connect to flipkart you are trying to connect to any of the website okay so in that case name server is required and that entry has to be made inside resolve.con file okay slash etc and n, n switch.com this controls the order of host name lookup okay the dns dns or the files or etc and all so this i have don't see much okay but this is also an important use in in term of troubleshooting and all if you wanted to see how exactly it is look like guys okay so you can see it from here 
right so you can see uh, this all things are commented as of now okay if you have to make configuration then you have to uncomment right adi was was asking in the day time sir how we do the how we are going to set the uh, o credit or something was there in the day time so i said because see it's a normal virtual machine so first you need to uncomment the things then only you can do the configuration according to your requirement okay that is how we need to do it guys correct so in this case uh, uh, the main important file if you wanted to know so one is okay this i did i show this one okay so i have only showed the command right the host name if you want to check the host name of a machine okay so you can use it but see if i am putting over here right in if i am entering nothing is coming right let's do the same thing for this okay cat slash and this one correct we are getting it why because in this case it is not configured yet so everything will be get configured in dns configuration only okay most of the thing i'll be configuring while configuring the dns server and from that dns server the server and the client model i am going to show you how exactly we uh, see okay right fine so one second guys yeah so this is also see this is also deprecated in rhcl9 replaced by nmcli command you have heard of nmcli command which stores the old style network interface configuration so earlier what we used to do is guys so if this is the location basically so i remember in rhcl7 and all we what we do is if you have to configure your interface basically interface is what interface is nothing but if i am doing a if config command or if i am doing a ip if an a command okay so this is one of your interface that is ens160 is there right it is mentioned over here right this is the interface for this uh, machine and it is the ipv4 for this one is this one right but the interface what i mean to say here in case the older version of rhcl we need to configure these things and all the interface has to be configured inside this directory only okay if you go inside this directory see nothing is there as of now nothing is there but earlier there are so you go and check in rhcl7 you can get n number of files you can get it if up if down and all all those will be in the form of file only in network speak script only we are configuring our interfaces like as of now you see this interface this interfaces we used to configure inside this one but now it is deprecated in rhcl9 okay so <clears throat> these are the very very important file which you need to remember one is your result.conf another one is slash etc host file and slash etc host name because in rhcsa certification also this will be used if you are configuring your virtual machine okay now coming back to here guys uh, as i said okay so instead of this right instead of your uh this uh, directory okay now we are using it is replaced by nmcli command okay so what exactly a nmcli command does over here so just see nmcli right and if i do man yeah just take care of yourself your loved one baba and jahin 